I think the real question is, how many times have we started a video with a tea or a coffee? I would say it's quite a few. It's also not hard to know that this is my current favourite mug. Previous one was a Volkswagen Camper mug, which was pretty damn cool. I think Christina got me it. But yeah, anyway, we will be back to Canada at some point soon. Too much more to explore in that country. Anyway, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Hope you're all keeping safe out there. Today's video is going to be kind of a quick one and it's around a question that we've got on our last few POV photography videos that we've done. And that is actually how we film them. A few of you guys have asked how we record, how we make those POV videos that you see us doing. All right, let's go. All right, let's go. All right, let's go. All right, let's go. And I'm gonna just jump in and fill you in on what we use, how we use it, the settings maybe that we use on it, and just how we put it together. So just in case you haven't seen any of those POV videos that we've done, we walk around, do street photography, and film it um, POV style, or point of view, which is what it stands for. And that is where it pretty much looks like it's what you would see from your eye, so like, I don't know how to explain it, almost like a VR type thing a lot of people have said. Um, so you're not seeing us holding the camera, you're just seeing our point of view. Um, and it's kind of supposed to be a chilled out type of video where you just get to follow us around almost and it feels like you're kind of there and you get to see the behind the scenes of how we get the shots we get. That's kind of the whole idea behind it. So there is actually quite a few different ways that you can film this. Some people use a headband and attach their action cam to it. Some people actually attach it to the top of their camera. But what we actually use is this little Acaso V50X action camera. Use a chest strap so we can mount the camera to it and then wear it on our chest, obviously. And we actually use a little Boya mic um, as well because the audio on this isn't too good and because it's on our chest, it's a little low and doesn't pick up the audio that great. So the chest strap that we use is pretty simple. We actually ordered this off Amazon. I believe it was like $12 or if you're in the UK, like, I think it was like nine pound, nine or 10 pounds, something like that. Pretty damn simple. Wraps over both your shoulders and it clips on around the side. It's got a little screw thing so you can attach your action camera on and you can also actually tilt it. So we've noticed sometimes when we're recording that we need to tilt it almost up a little bit because we're always holding the camera up to our eye and you can't really see the camera in the shot. So we can adjust it this way and, and yeah, you can just get it level so that it captures as much as possible. Don't make the mistake that we had where at the start when we record it, we for some reason had it facing too far down and you couldn't see the camera at all in any of the shots, so it looked kind of strange. But yeah, there's many different variations of this on Amazon, but they're all kind of the same. As long as it has the little mount at the front of your camera, you're all good. You can also get the head straps, which are similar to these, and you can mount it on your head. It does look a little strange, I'll say that. <laughs> Some people go for it, it does give you a different kind of angle and it also makes sure that when your camera's up at your eye, that you can see kind of over the camera. Whoa, almost knocked my tea over. But yeah, you can see like over the camera, which is a cool angle too. Um, some people also wear it on the wrist and some people put it on top of the camera. The only thing with that is if you're walking around, you're not always holding the camera up straight. So the camera's not gonna pick up what you're seeing all the time. It's kind of a point of view, but you you have to cut until you're holding the camera up every time, which is good for inserting into a video, but if the whole video is gonna be like that, you're gonna have a lot of cuts and not a lot of kind of wandering around. So it depends what you want. The first few times we recorded this, we actually just used the audio from the mic, which was a little low and we found that it wasn't picking up just the levels of audio that we wanted to. So we actually got this little Boya Lav mic. I believe it's the WM8, it could be Dash 1, I'll, I'll put it on screen, whatever it is. I think it's something like that. And this came in very handy. We actually originally ordered it for the podcast and then we got two other ones which are much better for the podcast. And this actually works very nicely for the POV. So what we do is we attach this to the body strap and then we plug it into the phone. It's actually very quick and easy. You just plug it into your smartphone and you just simply open up your voice recorder app, make sure that the mic's plugged in and hit record and it records for like an R. Sometimes we forget to turn it off and then we have a lot of very random chats that we find out later on. <laughs> yeah, so we have this plugged into the phone, then we attach it to the, to the body strap. And we actually put the phone into the little side pocket of our bag, which means it just goes under your arm, attaches, sits into the little side pocket, and yeah, 
pretty easy. You can take it out, turn it off, start the recording again if you want. It just improves the audio so much and we notice such a difference. We can now talk while we're walking and the audio sounds pretty damn good. Relying on the natural light coming in here to light this video is not the greatest. I haven't got a light cell at home here, so I'm gonna have to make this quick because we're running out of that good light. Anyway, settings on what we use. So let's just go through them from the top. If you're using this exact camera or if you intend to maybe try this exact camera, um, like I said, this is the Acaso V50X. And when you go onto the video menu, this is what you will see. So first off, resolution. We record our POVs in 4K 30. So ideally we would like to record these in 60 frames a second. We said that in the previous video that we done on this, just because it gives you a bit more of that action feeling. Um, POVs tend to be better the higher the frame rate, just because it picks everything up and makes you feel like you're there a little more. Um, but we record this one in 4K 30. We just found that the quality is better. We actually downscale this to 1080 for our videos because we film everything else on our main camera in 1080. Um, when we downscale this, we feel that it's just sharper than recording in the 1080. Make sure that you put all the stabilization options on. I did a little looking into how good the stabilization was on this thing and um, before we actually used it because you have image stabilization and gyroscope and you can choose to turn both of those off, one of them off, turn both of them on which is actually what we do and I wasn't sure how that would actually work because some cameras with stabilization it actually just kind of makes everything all wobbly and weird and doesn't work when you're actually walking about that much so I wasn't sure but we tried a few different tests with just image stabilization on and then we add it in the gyroscope and we found that with both of them on is the best for walking around getting stable footage we actually made the mistake in one of our or one of our recent attempts at making a pov video of leaving both of these off we forgot to turn them on and it was a disaster it was simply too shaky you just couldn't watch it so we actually had to cut out almost every piece of walking in the video because it was just all over the place. My advice would be turn both of those on. I'm not sure what it's like in extreme sports, but when we're just walking around, it's pretty damn stable, it looks pretty good. And um, video and code, we just leave that at H2.4. Slow motion, you don't need to worry about. Um, we did do a slow motion little sequence with this camera and it didn't turn out too well. You can check out the video, I'll leave it up here. But that's not what we use it for, so that's all good. External microphone, we don't need because we use it in the phone. Loop recording time, we turn this off I believe it just restarts so it does a new video every seven minutes instead of just one long one. I prefer to just work with one long video when I'm editing instead of having to import a load of clips and then work through them and make sure they're in order. So we just keep that off and it makes things easy. Audio recording, you may as well turn that on just in case for some reason. If you're using another mic in case it stops working, at least you have some audio. Exposure value, we set at zero because we don't want to underexpose or underex. We don't want to underexpose or overexpose and zero tries to keep it as neutral as it can. ISO, we have this on auto, just because we be out filming it a lot of the time at golden hour and the lighting's changing a lot, so if we keep it at 100 by the end of the footage, everything will be way too dark, so we have to keep it at auto. It's not normally our favorite choice because it does add in a little bit of noise, obviously that's what ISO does, but it can get a little grainy when it gets dark and we found that with this camera. Once you start losing light, then problems start to come in with stabilization and noise. So, I mean, if it's during the day, you could probably keep it on 100, but most of the time we're recording with change in light situations, so we keep it on auto. White balance, we just keep on auto. Um, I mean, cause auto tends to be the best. You, you could probably go for daylight if you're out during the day and it might get it a little more even and accurate throughout the whole day, but auto works for us. It's simple, easy, quick. Meter mode, we just do it center. And color we just keep natural, unless you want to get a little weird with it. I mean, black and white might look cool. Sepia, not gonna go for that. Just keep it at natural. And yeah, that's the settings that we use on this to record our POV street photography videos. I'm pretty sure I've covered everything. It's not really that hard. It's pretty simple to do. You just need to be aware that the camera is in your chest. So try not to blog it too much and hold your camera out a little bit when you're recording so people can actually see the screen. But besides that, um, it's pretty simple. We've obviously used the mic just to improve the audio and that's just pretty much a plug, hit record, and you don't really have to worry about it for the rest of the video. Um, 
but we really enjoy doing them and I think it's a different kind of view on photography it's not something I mean there's more people doing it now but before that it's not something that I've seen many people doing so I think it's cool I really enjoy watching them because you actually get to see the behind the scenes and you guys seem to like it too so yeah Hopefully that was a little helpful if you're thinking about trying POV photography or even any type of POV, whether you're skiing, skateboarding, it's a cool angle to get if you have your action camera strapped somewhere on your body. When it comes to editing those videos, it's actually pretty simple. We import the footage, downscale it to 1080, throw it on the timeline, cut out the little bits that we don't like. We actually include most of it most of the time and then simply overlay the pictures where we actually took them in the video one. That's pretty much it. It's easy for us to do, and I don't know, they're just enjoyable to watch. Could be wrong, but some of you guys seem to enjoy them, and we enjoy watching all the people doing them too, so yeah. If you have any more questions about anything that maybe I didn't mention, or anything I did mention, drop it in the comments below, and I'll make sure to answer them all. Hopefully I can help you out a little bit more. We're hoping that we can get the newest version of Acaso's action cameras possibly soon. I mean, we're not gonna be getting out to do POVs in the near future, but when we do, hopefully it'll be with a new one and we'll fill you guys in on what we think of it. But anyway, I'm not gonna keep you guys here any longer. Get back to doing whatever it is you're doing in your self-isolation time. Just make sure to keep up that social distancing, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. As we always say, take it easy, don't be a stranger.